Hey guys, welcome to Fishing the Midwest. My name is Jonathan Barzacchini. Today I'm going to be discussing several different ways to fish um, some slightly heavy grass. We're not fishing mat today, we're actually fishing the type of um, grass that you find under the mat. So like, you know, what's below the mat. And uh, this is a pre-mat condition and this is usually what this lake looks like before the mats start coming up. We're here in Northern Illinois. I'm gonna show you a couple ways on how to catch these bass. Hope you guys stay tuned and enjoy our show. First technique I'm going to talk about is probably something you would never even think of fishing these heavy grass. Um, you know, it's basically during the spawn season here in Illinois, northern Illinois, um, and a little bit in post spawn. You know, some fish are off the beds, hitting top water. Um, frog bite is actually on pretty nicely right now, but we're going to use this little finesse worm right here. This 4.8 finesse worm with a 116 sounds flick shake jig head right here. You know, it's basically a wacky rig, but a very finesse type. It's almost like a drop shot version of, of a wacky rig. And it's probably one of my favorite lures to use around these open holes of grass because it's just so slightly um, twitched in front of the bass's mouth and it, they'll just grab it, even on the fall. I don't even have time to, to twitch it, so I'm going to show you right here how I'm going to do that. Using 8-pound test fluorocarbon is basically all you need. Some guys will even use 20-pound braid on their spinning reels, and uh, that's just as good too. But I find that you know using a, um, a line that kind of blends in with the environment a little bit better is, uh, is something that increases my hookup. What I would like to do is I just like to pitch right into these little tiny holes, almost like if I were to be flipping. Um, I'm also using a pretty heavy rod, actually. Um, you know, the line isn't that heavy, and um, my reel doesn't have a whole lot of torque to it, but my rod is a seven foot three medium heavy action uh, rod, which enables me to pull bigger fish out of there, you know? Um, and it's just, it's something that gives me a little bit more leverage. I can't have small and finesse everything when I'm fishing this technique, um, especially if I'm fishing as heavy as grass. You know, I discussed the whole flick shake um, uh, setup of fishing, and um, it's, it's a really great technique, but usually when I'm fishing, I'm fishing right above the weeds and not exactly hitting the bottom and uh, not maintaining bottom contact. It's something I like to do also this time of year, early summer, uh, falling all the way through up to, uh, to late summer, is flipping. And uh, what flipping is, is you're using a weight that's usually half ounce to you know, all the way up to a full ounce and a half, depending on what cover you're uh, flipping, and uh, using a craw, and in some cases, a uh, punch skirt. What that is, is it enables you to get through the mats and grass much easier, and it also adds a little bulk, almost looks like a jig, that won't uh, come up with weeds when you uh, pull your bait for a next pitch. Um, you know, since it's not a whole lot of glass in, with grass up uh, right now, I'm using a, um, a wide gap hook, hook. I'm not using a flip hook. Uh, flipping hook, anything that's really heavy duty, um, and I'm just using a half ounce because it's still kind of a um, you know soft grass, not exactly mat yet. Uh, I'm using 15 pound test uh, copolymer line again. Don't need to use the braid right now, you know it's not very necessary. And um, I'm using a four inch chicken craw in uh, pumpkin color right here, and I'm just kind of flipping and, and pitching right in these kind of suspending grass areas. Uh, seeing if I can get in front of the bass's face and uh, look for an opportunist bass to hit that. And sometimes what I'll do, and it's a really good technique, is uh, I'll have three rods handy. I'll have a frog rod, a flick shake rod, and, um, and of course the rod I'm using right now, the jig, the, um, the uh, flipping rod. And what I like to do is I like to flip in a spot. Let's say I get a bite, I'm like, oh, that's a good fish. You know, boom, missed that fish. Oh, man. You know, what I don't do is I don't pitch right back in there with that same bait. I figure, you know, that, that fish could be a good fish. A good fish is going to get fooled twice. You know, that fish has learned. You know, once I drop that flipping rod right there, I'll usually go over to the spinning setup, the flick shake setup, and I'll try to get right back in there as soon as possible, get as close to that area as possible, and just kind of flick it right below the surface, and I'll just kind of drop it. Usually on that drop, there's a fish that comes and scraps it, you know, I'll usually set hook and bring it in. But if that doesn't work, and I find that that fish doesn't want that flick shake, or hits it and I miss it again, like shoot, you know, what's my plan C? I'll drop this rod, pick up the frogging rod, and uh, I'll pick up a, usually a smaller frog, not a very big one, not like a king daddy or anything like that. And um, I'll look for that, that area again. And what I'll do is I'll throw that frog right in there. And I'll just kind of pop it, pop it, pop it, stop it, pop it. And I like to go right past that spot. I don't like to stop it right on that spot. Uh, mainly because, you know, I've found a natural pose. The fish is like, well, that's kind of weird. Why is that frog stopping right where I, you know, felt the little hook point in me um, earlier on? 
and uh, those are just three things I like to do. And it can happen in any order. I could get a hit up, hit on a uh, frog, miss it, and then go and throw the flip bait in there. So it really doesn't matter what what cycle you do, as long as whatever you get the bite on first, you go to the flick shake second, and the frog last, or you know, depending on so you get a hit on a frog, go to the flip bait then the flick shake. So that's just. That's a really good tip for a lot of people fishing heavy grass. Don't give up on that first bite and don't flip the same bait in there. Usually most of the time they'll hit it on a wacky rig, a flick shake, or even a frog. Um, but you'll have some cases where you do hit the, uh, the fish right back on the flip bait. So we're going to move on down, fish these few other places, and throw the frog along the shoreline see if we can pick up a good um, late, uh, late afternoon fish.